Yeah, so I'd like to know what all you do there. I'm in a domestic violence crisis, and um, I just don't um, know where I can go get assistance and what can, you know, what oh, can you boy. offer? Yeah, you know what, sweetie? We don't we don't really have anything here at Catholic Charity. I could give you some referrals, though. Um, I know. Have you already have you contacted the police? Or are you, um, does there, uh, is there any kind of services, period? Situation? Any services, period, you could offer at all, period. Anything. Oh, for, for what? Just for any kind of services. Violence? What services do you offer? Um, well, financial assistance when we have funding. Right now, we're pretty low on that funding. Um, and then, you know, we just have other agencies we work with. You know, for people who are either homeless or I'm homeless you know, in the crisis. Violence, I can, I'm homeless in the okay. crisis. Well, and and where are you, honey? I'm homeless. Yeah, where whereabouts are you? Oh, Fort Worth. So? Okay. And you're not in a shelter or anything currently. Um, well, you said well, you help with homeless people. How do you help? I give you a phone number, basically. It's an organization we work with. What's the name of it? It's called, it's called Hands of Hope. Okay. And what do they do? Oh, what do they do? Uh, well, they assist with, um, homeless, whatever your situation may be. I'm, I'm not exactly sure all of what they provide. Okay, and what's their number? But you, you, but you could call them, 817-298-2779. Okay, and what do you do I'm there? Sure what do you do there? Kind of what your needs are. What do you do there? Oh, at Catholic Charity? Yes. Um, well, we do a lot of, lot of different things. Um, I'm just... Um, what are you looking for? Yeah, I've had to experience this years. Um, I told you I was in a domestic violence crisis and homeless. Each location I call refuses right. to tell me how they can help for six years. They will not, period. So I'm just trying to see if you don't mind telling me what all you do there so I can tell you what I can use. But if I'm homeless and in a domestic violence crisis, I say, you should I go look at the site? Because that's what I've had to do. Let me go look at the website and then that'll tell yeah. me what you do because. Okay, thank you for the other locations, but I asked you what you could do, ma'am. You don't want me to know what you can do there. I'm looking at the website, and it says, yeah, um, Poverty Ending Powerhouse, we are today out of Poverty Pathways, 20,000 of our friends and neighbors in need leave poverty behind for good, Catholic Charities, Fort Worth. Right. Yeah, but I'm yes, asking you what you can do. That's our, well, that's what we, we do a program set up for ending poverty. And it's a kind of mentorship. Oh, yeah, you didn't tell me about those. I had to look at it at the website. I asked you what you did, uh, would do, and you refused to tell me. So I had to go through to the website to look and I'm see what you did. I'm not refusing. I was just trying to think of exactly all we offer. <laughs> oh, I've had to endure yeah, this a long time. Get, well, well, this this line we typically get requests for well, lots of different things, but usually for you know rent and utilities, that kind of thing. So I don't know exactly all that our organization does. So you know, I can't use the services there. Well, right. It just depends. We don't. I can. I gave you the homeless line. I can yeah, you gave me. You directed me to another organization, but I called this organization, and you directed me directed me to another organization, and you're denying me services that you offer there. I've had to endure this years. So when I call the other organization, they're going to do the same thing you do. You're doing. I call Catholic Charities to get service from you guys. Right. But we don't specifically have a homeless area department. We used to do it on our own. We don't anymore. It's just the organization's just changed, I guess. But we still we still give out a lot of resources. I think that Hands of Hope should be able to help you. 
Okay, but Catholic Charities is refusing any help. What about the, the counseling you have? Because your website says that you have 20,000 friends and you wouldn't tell me until I looked up, up the website. And now you're saying that you no longer do it. I have a, a worksheet in my hand that says that you offer counseling. Okay. What's your name? Well, maybe we do. What's Let's your name? Look, Debbie. Okay, and your position? Uh, I'm a volunteer. I answer the phone. Okay. I'm just trying to establish a pattern, ma'am. Okay, whenever you're ready for me to know well, how you could possibly help there, if you want me to know. Well, it's not that I don't want you to know. I will then if, I, if I'd just like to know, ma'am, I'm pressed for time. I've had to endure this years. If you don't mind, I'd just like to know how this organization can help before you go send me to another one. With what, though, exactly? Well, I, what I saw of you were refusing to tell me about how you can help people in poverty. Your website says that you have 20,000 friends, but you're refusing to tell me. And then you didn't want me to know about the counseling. You gave me a look at number to another location. And I have to endure a lot of pain and suffering. So maybe you can you give me the therapy? Because it's been sabotaged for years for me. I, a lot of torment and being antagonized and schemed to deprive me of services all over the place. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to deny you any services. I'm trying to help you, honey. Um, but I don't, I don't, let me just look into the counseling part. I, let me just see. It's not on accident. Do you mind holding the line and let me just see if I can okay. find out what you need? Okay. Creating research-backed solutions to end poverty and transform lives. This won't play. My device will play while I'm on the phone. Case management. Why well, variety of short to long term case management programs for people from all walks of life, from students to refugees to expecting mothers. If you're in need of a financial or emotional support or need help connecting to local available resources, please choose from one of the following options. You can call if you're not me. Public benefit eligibility, community resources, dental care, immigration services, pregnancy support, transportation services that wasn't offered, financial coaching, employment assistance, none of that was offered. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, we as far as counseling, we do provide counseling through our long-term case management program. So that's something that would have to be applied for. Uh, here on this line, we just pretty much take care of people who need their bills paid. So I can give you resources or, um, you know, just have to, that's about all we can do to help you. Oh, so you're denying services here? And you want me to go somewhere else? You won't give me the job coaching? The um, case management, none of that you will offer. You have to send me somewhere else. No, no, no. The long-term case management we do offer, that's something you'll need to apply for. If you would like that website, I can give that to you. Oh, okay. You have and to apply for it online? On Monday morning. Yeah, you have to go online on Monday mornings when we open up. But it didn't sound like that's what you really wanted or needed because you sound like you're in a more of a situation where you need help now so that's what I haven't been, been heard for a long time ma'am I asked what I that's why I'm not able to be heard because people keep on talking and they're rude for six years I haven't been heard I did communicate okay. with you if there was anything period that you could offer and you told me absolutely nothing like people have done six years on my phone and have actually been psychologically abusive so I found out on my phone that you do help with jobs uh, there, uh, counseling, you offer case management um, programs to end poverty and a um, wide ra range of other um, services. We do. We oh. do. Okay, so how do, how do you get them? How do you get them? What you need to do on, mon on Monday mornings, we open up our website and you can go ahead and apply and you can put down all of your needs. I, but I would say case long-term case management, and um, 
and then somebody from our organization will get back with you. With yeah, I don't. Minutes. When I do things online, but I don't I get anything done. Nothing happens. I don't get my calls returned. Um, Is there another option instead of doing it online? Uh, not that I know of. No. Is there anyone that you can ask? Because you I weren't aware about the services yeah. either. And I'd like to know the services since I am in a domestic violence crisis. That can you do that? I know, but I don't that, have those. I know you don't have them. They never do, ma'am. I'm asking if you can find someone that does. No, not within our organization. I, that's all. I oh, okay, so no one knows what services you offer domestic. within your organization. No one knows. I'm just trying to incriminate people, ma'am. No, I because I've called this six I'm, years, I'm and to... I, ma'am, ma'am. Okay, well, you've only talked to me once, and you're not you're not giving me a chance to even explain. So I'm having. I've been on the with line with you ten minutes, ma'am. Uh, Eleven minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you told me to go somewhere else. But I told you what I can offer. So I, I did ask to speak with someone over you, ma'am, because you don't know what you have to offer. And you are refusing to put someone else on the yes, line. You. you said I that. Told you. I'm sorry. Oh, I said yes. I do know what I have to offer. What you're needing right now, though, I can give you referrals. Okay, give me. Do what? Let's, let's, let's do it your way, ma'am. Let's do it your way. Let's. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm, I have pen and paper ready. Let's do. Let's go ahead and do it your way. I have an organization. I just need to look up their number. Okay. I can't find so it. to get help with through Catholic Church, shy. I'm just trying to make sure. Okay. So I can. I've already called them. So calling to get services through Catholic Charities. You're giving me in uh, in house services. I'm requesting. You want me to call? I can still shine to get help with Catholic Charities. I can still shine, getting help with Catholic Charities. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm asking for is help with through right, Catholic Charities. With, and you're giving no, me I can still shop. Catholic Charities. Okay, so getting help with Catholic Charities. Your I'm organization, sorry, you want me you want me to I'm, call I can still shine to get help through you guys. Okay, what's the number that I can still shine? Yeah. And then I'll ask them how I get help through Catholic Charities. Okay, that's what you want me to do, ma'am? No, that's not what I said. I'm asking no, for help through Catholic I, Charities, ma'am. An organization that could help you. I don't, we don't have the domestic violence. No, I asked for the services here. that you offer there, ma'am. I'm not being heard. I'm sorry? I'm asking for the services that you offer there. Uh, Is the, they want to be, or well, to cause psychological damage. It's unintentional. Oh, hold on one second. Okay. Arnold, she's not letting go. 13 minutes. She's being extremely irate. Hello? I'm sorry. There's nothing more I can provide for you today, so please have a blessed day. She hung up. Calling Catholic Charities Fort Worth. We are here to give you hope. Gracias por llamar. Please remain on the line after your call for a short survey. You may also visit cats.org and click on get help to request. So it's five number. now, so they want me to be on hold a long time to get denied services. So I have a choice. Do I want to stay on hold all this time for them to play games that I know aren't realistic? But you don't call six years and every place is scheming to sabotage uh, assistance for you? But she blatantly lied. She wouldn't give me services. She kept telling me to go somewhere else to get help with Catholic Charities. They manipulate the automated system. That's why I think they're identity thieves. How do you how do you have that capability to do that? Thank Notice how she never gave me the number. Leave a call back number. Pattern. Press one. She said she was gonna give me the number for I can still shine in her scheme, so I couldn't even get that. I live in the United States. The United States for an army full of people, someone has a payroll to make sure I don't get services anywhere, which is coming at church, at the organization I'm at now, everywhere I go. I'm highly stopped and they control my phone and have all these people blatantly lie. This is illegal, but nothing has repetitively been, been done. I'm still keep being kept away from my child. Each time people may say, get a job, you know, I've already had jobs in cars. They take that too. If I can't ride the bus or eat in peace, 
How in the world am I going to get a job? I may help you today. Yes, um, I'd like to know uh, how to get started with getting services. Uh, yeah, yes, and what kind of services would you like? Um, case management. Okay. You would go online and apply. Uh, on Monday mornings, we open up the website, and there is an application to fill out, and then someone will reach out back to you once you get the appointment. The reason I say Monday morning is right now our website is closed um, just because we filled up all the appointments for next week. So next week, you'll be applying for appointments the following week. And then, uh, yes, you can put down that you're interested in either long or short-term case management and someone will get get back to you are you allowed to tell me how what those consist of the case management um i think we spoke before dear um i don't know everything case management involves it's pretty much a one-on-one -on -one, um relationship that the client has with one of our um case managers and you can set your goals whatever you would like and we're kind of here to help you achieve those goals and not not you know just provide we're more of a resource and um, yeah it's kind of a commitment on on both sides but uh, it is a good program from what I understand okay and I do apologize but for six years when I call people have been trying to keep me from services and they keep me on the phone and they carefully articulate their words to just play games emotionally and psychologically and deprive me of any knowledge on what they do. So I'm forced to get on the website because I, this is my life for six years and I have not had, it's been impossible for me to stop it. So then they play all these games emotionally and psychologically when I'm trying to get services. Then when I come in, the police department just has them enforced that they don't give me assistance. So it's the run around for years. So that's why I'm trying to interrupt this pattern of people keep on telling me, you never did give me the number to I can still shine. And when I asked you what you can do there, you wanted me to call I can still shine. And then you blatantly lied on me when you weren't telling me what you can do there. But I apologize because oh, I've had to endure this hundreds lying. of calls for years. Yeah, I'm sorry, hon, but I don't know who you called for years. I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm just shy, if I'm now. able to tell you about my and abuse. I've already spoken to you. And about then people this. are psychologically abusive. Leave, I can. Can I have call. the number for I can still shine? You don't want me to have that number? She hung up. They they can't. They're working for my abuser. It won't call. They have to set up the call. When I started recording, then it did it. It let me place the call. Yes, uh, may I know what you guys do there? Uh. Are you looking for to donate something, or do you need food? Um, I was recommended to call here, and I'm asking you what you do there. We help battered women and children. Oh, well then, good. I'm uh, in an abusive crisis that involves the government. Pardon me. I'm in an abusive crisis that also involves the government. The police and government have been enlisted in my abuse. Yeah, we're just a food bank. I mean, we're not a shelter, but I can give you a number for a shelter. You just said that you have helped battered women? Yeah, with food and clothing. Oh, that she recommended me to get food and clothing? Well, okay, I'll get the clothing. How does that work? Okay, you send me an email, and then I make an appointment for you to come in and, and the first day, and then uh, we give you three bags of food once a month for up to two I just I asked about the clothing, ma'am. This is a pattern for me. It's a what? Pattern. I asked for clothing, and you told me about food. With our program, you have to get three bags of food first, and then you're a client, and then after that, you can get clothes. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Um, there's been catch-22 years. Uh, I've never gotten the services for six years. Okay, ma'am. I'm just trying to show a conspiracy, which is a felony crime that people have yet to get their charges. Okay, thank you. I'll be happy, ma'am. Yes. I'll be happy to give you clothes. Oh, you just said that you have to have food. I, I can't use the food. You don't want food at all? No, unless I just gave it away. That's a bit much, you know. I just, I just was exci so excited to get any services because I don't get them. So I thought, well, sh I can get the clothes. I haven't gotten any other services, but okay, they, I haven't got clothes here from this shelter either. That's what did you, I'm sorry. What did you say? Send me an email, and I'll send you an email back. 
back and tell you everything, and then you can come next week and get clothes. No, ma'am, that's okay. Thank you. She hung up. Notice how people are treating woman, a woman in a domestic violence crisis. Oh, you call me back, ma'am? Uh-huh. I didn't just want to have to go there and go through this long, drawn-out process to get clothes. I'm in a domestic violence crisis in your website. You interrupted me looking at your website. Your website says that uh, I can still shine as a faith-based, safe, supportive center for women and children from all walks of life with no exceptions. We provide our clients the opportunity to choose safety over domestic violence and drug ab abuse. We offer a new start to our women and children. And uh, food, toiletry, household, clothing, counseling. I'm just, I'm just telling you what the website has on there. Counseling. I, I, I can I can I communicate? Because you just said you offer clothes. Yes. You, you interrupted. Clothes. I wanted to look to go over this with you. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Toiletries, household items, clothing, counseling, eyeglasses, collars, scholarships, backpacks, Thanksgiving turkeys, Christmas. Um. One moment. The program was built to help better women in Fort Worth and along with their children. We are proud to be served. When women leave a violent home, they don't know. Do you have shelter there? No, we give you a number for a shelter. Okay, because it's saying when you leave a violent home, uh, violent home, what number do you call for shelter? I have two of them. Would you like those numbers? Um, what's the name of the location? Baptist Church. So now, since you know, you, I've heard years that there was hiding for women, and you can go underground and places help you, but for six years, it has been impossible. I can't get hid. So all the places I go to are conspiring with the abuse. So that's um, Baptist. This is where you go hide from a. a I'm sorry. Ma'am, I've been through a lot of emotional distress. Um, go ahead, ma'am. Well, you can come in today and get clothes. We can set you up next week with a counselor. You can have a college scholarship where you can have eyeglasses. And then we have a once-a-month event where we all get together, if you feel like it, and we get manicures, pedicures, facials, and all that. So we offer a lot more than just food. Yeah, but you didn't so say that, ma'am, until I looked at the website. You called me when I was looking at the website immediately and interrupted. But I appreciate you calling me back. Yeah, because y'all, you said that you offer food and clothes, that you, you are honest you with like me. to pray for you? Ma'am, I'm very particular about who prays for me. I don't know who you are, and I don't know why a woman fleeing with domestic violence, you wouldn't be honest with me about all the services like everyone I've talked to on my phone. But you did say you want to give me numbers and people play games and hang up before I get the numbers or start arguments. You well, did. I, I have a pen and paper, you know, and you're telling me that you were going to give me numbers, ma'am. I don't know why every phone call, they start arguments and it's conflict. Every single call. And you, you help women in domestic violence crises? Would you like to come by today and get clothes? <laughs> ma'am, you don't want me to have the number that you just told me to get you, that you were going to give me, ma'am? Yes, I just, you bounce from question to question, and I don't have an opportunity to answer you. You asked me about the clothes earlier, and I said no, I didn't want to go through all that, and then I told you what was on your site. And then you repeated to me what I just said. And then you told me that you were going to give me numbers and then you disregard go all over the place and then blaming me for what you're doing. You just told me you were going to give me numbers, ma'am. All right, it's 800. What is this for? It's the 800 hotline. This is the 800 hotline? Uh-huh. What's the 800 hotline? 800. The domestic violence hotline, I already have that number. They cover for abuse there, too, and won't help properly. So what is the other number, ma'am? They hung up in my face. Tarrant County Housing, 682. Okay, so to flee abuse, ma'am, I just want to make sure. So to flee a domestic violence crisis, you call Tarrant County Housing? Right, it's for anyone that needs housing whatsoever. Okay, so you help battered women, and then they have to wait to get on the waiting list to get housing? housing but these two places do and I'll be glad to give you the number. So that's not a domestic violence organization ma'am. You help batter women but you don't have a place for them to go? You're, you're, let me go back to your we're, website. We're let me. We're not a shelter. We're a food bank. 
Okay, it says when women leave a violent home, they don't know that they have. What we do. It's so much psychological abuse all over the place, ma'am. Can you please be um kind of gentle with me? And not talk while I'm talking and be compassionate because I'm fleeing a domestic violence crisis that involves a lot of parties and psychological abuse. Okay, did you have any other questions for me? You were giving me numbers, ma'am, on how to flee a domestic violence crisis. And you gave me Tarrant County Housing. That they don't help you flee a domestic violence crisis. They're just a housing program and there's 800 shelter. That's the only other number I have. Okay, so you're a battered woman shelter, and you can only give me the domestic violence hotline. No, you don't have any I'm location. I'm a battered woman shelter, ma'am. I'm a food bank. I'm a battered woman food bank. No, because you offer more than food banks, but if you're unwilling to tell me, I'm just trying to set up a pattern, ma'am, so people can get the charges. This is a felony crime. So, okay, ma'am, if you're that, you are playing games with services, I, when I come in person, you're going to want to deny them, too, like they've been doing six years. This is a felony, and I'm ready for people to get their charges. We offer you. We offer to everybody. Uh, people call and start arguments, ma'am. They used to do uh, it. was just uh, so out of, uh, out of control. I had to start recording my calls because it's not realistic. I don't know how people are doing this, scheming to deprive me of services year after year, call after call, and contribute to some emotional distress and psychological abuse, ma'am. But if you're, you know, I will go ahead um, and uh, call another location because all you gave me was Tarrant County Housing to flee abuse and then the number to the domestic violence hotline. Those were your resources. The number for Safe Haven too, if you like it. No, it's network. Safe Haven won't help me. All of it's okay. network together. That's why the people on the phone give me places that are problematic. That's what they're told. Okay, ma'am. That's why these calls have to be set up and then uh, malfunction until they get the call set up. Okay, ma'am. No, no one would ever believe my story. Let me keep trying to see what other cons they have to deny services. Thank you, ma'am. Would you like clothing from us? It, see the psychological abuse oh, you call me back ma'am I told you that I didn't want to I mean people do this all the time alright well if you change your mind and you want clothing or counseling or college scholarships or anything else of the seven things we offer we'll be happy to give them to you okay if I want the counseling how does that work anything you want you need to come in and fill out a one page application and then we'll send you to Cornerstone Counseling within one week Okay, well, maybe I can get some counseling that's not controlled this time. Okay, thank you. You don't want your abuse and controlling counseling like he's been doing. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh-huh, bye. Bye. It's about 10 minutes. It provides uh, information, provides information and assistance to adults and youth victims of family violence, domestic violence, or dating the violence. The hotline.org has important information on groups. safety planning, they understanding have not abuse, of that and how to help to others call. who may be impacted by abuse. Searching these resources can be helpful while you wait. The hotline provides the following services, crisis intervention, domestic violence education, safety planning, Directly connecting college to services providers, such as local shelters, referrals to agencies that provide legal, economic self-sufficiency, sexual, sexual assault, elder abuse, children, and other related services. In higher than normal call volume, and wait times may be longer. If at any time it becomes unsafe for you to wait, please hang up and call back at a safer time. Your estimated wait time is about two minutes. You've reached the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Are you in a safe place to talk? Uh, as safe as it'll get, ma'am. Okay, I'm happy to know. And can I get your age, gender, and ethnic background to begin? Yes. Okay, and that was Fort Worth, Texas. Correct? That's correct. Okay, and my name is Kiva. How can I help you today? Yes, I'm in a domestic violence crisis that has involved the government, and they have schemed a conspiracy to violate my rights before COVID. There was all kinds of schemes to keep me away from services. And then COVID happened, and, you know, a lot of people were affected and didn't get services along with me.
But nonetheless, I'm in a domestic violence crisis that has involved the government, and they've railroaded me in enlisting parties and conspiracy to violate rights crimes to keep me from services to keep me in the abuse. They've trapped me in on, in on trains, taking kids away in corruption, enlisted the locations I was at into harassment and torment, and played games and hacked my phone and all other devices, enlisted family members in the corruption, and multiple organizations and churches. I've had identity theft and crime, financial abuse, and police cover for all of it. All law enforcement is denied for me. And how long has this been going on, just since COVID? Um, it has been out of control. It's been going on before COVID. It's been out of control um, since 2018 when they arrested me in front of my child for profit. They uh, were trying to set me up to keep me away from another child. And then the officer said that he was going to put a case on me for wanting access to my son, my legal custodial child. So with the second child, they had to scheme and do it differently. My legal custodial child, I could not get back because police wouldn't do law enforcement. So I can get my child back. So with the second child, they've made false statements that are easily proven and won't investigate it. So I won't have access to my other child in corruption. And she's been in an abusive uh, situation physically as well as psychologically. And nothing has been repetitively done years. I go to churches, they conspire with it. And a lot of them play mind games and um, contribute to psychological abuse as well. And do you have a lawyer? Have you been able to talk to anyone outside of um, anyone in Dallas or anything about with the dealing with the domestic violence part of it? Well, can you tell me what I can do? I can most definitely. I can't personally tell you exactly. Oh, it says on your page because they've denied it for years. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, oh, I, I experience this very often. It says that. You do. Okay, there's a website, womenslaw.org. It provides uh, information and assistance to adult and youth victims of family violence. Well, can we concentrate on what you can do on this phone call instead of me going somewhere else? That's what I'm trying to do. If you would politely stop interrupting me so that I can explain myself, then we can move forward. But if you're going to continue to interrupt then I won't be able to explain to you or give you any resources that you might be looking for to be able to help you. I do have a couple of resources that I would like to give. Oh, but I'm not being heard, ma'am, as I haven't been in most calls. People start arguments. You don't, can we discuss what you can do first? What do, what I, I can, I will be able to provide you with the resources. That's what I can do. Oh, it says that you do safety planning. That can help. It says that you do safety. How would you like the safety planning? What, what, when I asked you if you were in a safe place, you said yes. And then you started telling me exactly what was going on and what, ha what was happening. I'm trying Is there any particular reason why you're upset? Because this is psychologically abusive from call to call. Can you I'm tell me why? Being, I'm not being, okay, so what I'm going to do, because you continue to dis, to interrupt me to be able to answer your questions, I'm going to disconnect. No, ma'am, I've been on hold a very long time. I'll obey and do it the way that you want to do, okay. ma'am, because I've been on hold a long time, and people have been scheming years. It's disappointing, you know. You can't go to your family. Then when I meet friends, they start acting, behaving strangely like the other one. You know, one thing that I can't talk about, they look at me, okay? They just stare at me like they're a psycho. So a multitude of people stare at me, and then they do things to try to scare me. Like, you know, I don't know what the fetish is with that, but they just, multiple different environments. They just stare at me, and if you look at the camera footage, you can see that these people are deliberately staring at me and waiting for the time to do these little petty things to cause fear. So in a whole, uh, specific group, it would be like three or four people doing this at one time. What he wants me to know is my environments are controlled, and he has the power to control people and have the mistreatment that I experience. He gets off on that. I think that he loves mind control and being able to control people, and does it look like he don't have it? If churches conspire with domestic abuse, um, let po police bully people and threaten them for recording, how many people record at church? But do you know how many people, because they would have odd services and degrade me as well as certain churches. So I started recording it. So then they said they, um, one church, church banned me for recording the church service. 
because they didn't want evidence of how I was being mistreated at this church service. This was found in the living word. The word, the location where I saw the snake and they did all kinds of, uh, caused a lot of psychological abuse. Then he had me sign this contract and then de denied, uh, would not tear it up. He said that he was going to let me use this RV. And then he said, lured me in with the RV to have me sign this contract so that he would not be held responsible for the psychological damage they had caused to me. Domestic violence hotline. Para Espanol, oprima dos. For instance, higher than normal call volume and wait times may be longer. If at any time it becomes unsafe for you to wait, please hang up and call back at a safer time. Your estimated wait time is about 10 minutes. So what I've had to endure is multiple different locations staging conflict in the schemes to keep me from service. And they want to blame the party, the most vulnerable party, me. So why don't we blame her for the services we're sabotaging and keeping her from? So I've been the scapegoat. But you know, a woman in domestic violence situation needs love and support. And you would have an expectation that churches would be of God and realize that. While you're waiting, and not you scheme to keep me from help. I can understand all the other people being corrupt, but you kind area. of think that churches Church would have some integrity. Well, some integrity. Directory. That's where I'm most hurt. I don't, I, I, my name is okay. Kiana Clark. I'm sorry? Who Kiana Clark. Okay, I'm Sharon Brown. Did you call me or was this a missed call? I was asking you who you were with. Okay, let me call you right back, okay? I have another call. For I have all these interruptions. Are you, you don't want me, are you with uh, NAN, National Action Network? Oh, yes. Uh, are you calling on behalf of NAN? No, I have been trying to get services with Nan a long time, and um, people said that an attorney would call. Yeah, I do volunteer work with them out of Texas, so I wasn't sure what the nature of the call is. Because yeah, I'm in a domestic call. violence crisis that has involved the government. They've hacked my phone and committed all kinds of other crimes, and I was trying to get services, but I never got them. I was told that I was be um, given an attorney in my area as well as legal advice, and it never happened. And you told me uh, you were supposed to have been an attorney, but you didn't give me any legal no, advice or direction. No, I'm not an attorney. Um, can I give you a call back, please? I'm sorry. Okay. You just called me? You did this last time we talked? No. No. You had I called and interrupted. I was on the phone with the domestic violence hotline, and you called and interrupted. Think, this is the I second time did, you did I this. I think I do. Excuse me. I think I do remember. Uh, yeah, you called me, and then you told me you wanted to call me back a long time ago. And I never got, okay. you never, you said you were going to send me emails. I never got it. And I you called me to tell me that you were going to call me back. I could experience a lot of psychological abuse. Okay. So let me check into that and I'll give you a call back. I don't, I don't understand why you would call me, ma'am, and interrupt and then have to go like you did to the last time. Hello? So what he gets a kick out of, he likes people to call me. He likes me to think that I'm going to get that help and then for them to keep me on hold. Like this church. I can't find the party. We haven't forgot about you three months. You know, but this is a pattern that has followed me. That's his fetish. So that's, they always want me to wait to get nowhere. Domestic violence hotline. Are you in a safe place to talk? It's as safe as it'll get, ma'am. Okay. If something happens, feel free to hang up. We're here 24-7. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then you can tell me what's going on. What state are you in? I'm in Texas. Do okay. you have a, a name or, like, an ID number? No, ma'am. Uh, this line is totally confidential and anonymous. If you call back, you wouldn't get the same person anyway. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you your age, gender, and race, please. I was given this number by organizations, but I've called before, and um, people have been rude to me for years. And sabotage the systems okay. are calling on this line. Was it a domestic violence organization? Yes. That gave you the number, I'm saying. Yeah, but I was trying to years. communicate that I've been calling for years and I have had abusive operators for years. Oh, I'm sorry that that happened to you. Thank you. Are you still in a domestic violence situation? Yes, I am. How many months or years have you been in it? Six years plus. Okay. Okay, um, is 
this an intimate partner? No, it's someone that I met online in uh, knew briefly and ended the online relationship with. But they're it's like a person in a horror movie that has completely hijacked my life. Brought, brought people to keep my kids away from me and it had terrorized my family so they're scared to be around me, interrupt friendships, police came to interrupt conversations, have um, people r- ruin my food at the multiple different restaurants I went to go get my car detail, they split my seat so he's what? able to abuse po- the pl- multiple different police departments to cause havoc, I'm openly stalked by the police department, multiple I've had identity theft in the police department covers for it. I've had guns pulled on me, threatened, degraded sometimes three and four times a day. You can tell this party has a mental illness. Even on my, I have a YouTube channel, even on the channel, all these people in the comments are degrading and bl- a lot of blatant lies. He loves torment. Now, have you been able to, um, have, have you ever filed for a protection order against them? They won't let me get a protection order. How does a protection order work? Can you tell me the process? Usually, you have to know, for one, you have to know the person's address. Um, most of our domestic violence programs have what they call a legal advocate. The advocate will help you fill out the paperwork. It's submitted in most counties. I can't tell you how it works everywhere. But in most counties, it's submitted and you're granted a temporary order. Well, There's the police state department state keeps coming to interrupt. Court. The police department keeps coming at locations to interrupt. They came at George Allen um, one time, and then the worker said that she saw that she was instructed not to talk to me a second time at George Allen. They interrupted me at Frank Crowley two different times and forced me to leave. The one time pushing and shoving, trying to get a protection order. Um, I tried to do it in Fort Worth, and police came there. So, um, the DA and the family, I don't understand when you say you tried to get the police, uh, you tried to get the protection order, but the police came. Yes. Yes. They come and interrupt. What did they come to? They, they lie and slander and scheme. So I can't get protection. They deprive me of record. The police in another County came to No, the police County, the Fort Worth police came. And in Dallas, the Dallas Police Department came and marshals came where to came interrupt to me getting came. a protect. They've also shut down a domestic violence rally. Someone that's mil- mentally unbalanced is controlling the government, running the government, and no one seems to be uh, disturbed by it because I'm still going through it. They, he's also controlled churches. I was drugged out of a church and body slammed on concrete at a church that I attended for decades. Now, since they incriminated themselves with an assault at church. Whoever did that, they just enlist churches to conspire with the conspiracy to violate rights felony and deprive me of any assistance, and they do it. Have you ever tried to, uh, was anything ever recorded? I mean, somebody's being body slammed. A lot of people probably pull out their phone and start recording it, really. Um, it, the church, happened? but the problem of it is these people cover for it. It was probably on their camera footage. They, the, but I'm sure that someone witnessed me being drugged out. I fell because I was giving a testimony and begging for my life. My pastor kept disregarding me and blowing me off like all other churches have done to this day. So then I just stood up and I said, I'm afraid for my life. And then I told the church how I was afraid and I begged for help. Someone grabbed me really um, a powerful uh, with force and then started. Um, the sanctuary is huge. So they pushed me, um, started pulling me and tugging me and forcing me out. And I was walking and they were doing it so quickly, I fell. So my legs were dragging on the ground. And they would drug me out of the church. And they just sat there and looked. Wow. Just sat there. Now every wow. location wants to conspire. I was at a domestic violence organization, sitting there listening. The police department came, arrested me, and assaulted me. They wouldn't let me go to court for attending a domestic violence support group. No one, my family won't help. All organizations lie and scheme, churches, everywhere I go, they're lying and scheming and keeping me from services. And doing that in a conspiracy is a felony charge that people have yet to see. Have you have you tried to go and file for it in another cold county other than Fort Worth, Dallas? I did it. At, um, I Let me repeat. I went to Fort Worth, and then the police department came there. I went to George Allen. The police department came. And then uh, at George Allen, and then the lady said that she was already instructed not to tell me anything and would not give me any legal advice or help, period. 
I went to Frank Crowley. Is Allen a, a city? Or a George city? Allen is a um, building in Dallas, a court building. Oh, okay. And they were also keeping committees. The, said, oh, I'm yeah. asking you, have you ever went outside? Did you ever go like to Denton? Or I, I communicated that I was at Dallas. In Texas. Have you ever tried to go somewhere outside of that little arena? No, because no one's putting these like people under control. I don't know how to stop the abuser. Everyone's con- wanting me to move away from him and let him be in committing all these crimes in the police department. First, I've already moved around and built myself up, and they just seem to take it away. So first, we need to stop the abuser, which no one wants to do. They don't want me to have any legal knowledge, blatantly lie year after year, nothing's done, but doing this in a conspiracy is a felony charge. Do you have, do you have doc- documentation of those things that have been I have on? a YouTube channel where I compiled evidence, but I'd like, you know, the safety planning and how I can protect myself against this abuser and the police department. You know who the, I can't tell you how to protect yourself from the police, but do you know the person, you know the person that's abusing you, right? Yes. Do you, do you have do you have their address? Yes, I have his business address. Okay. So, since you have had trouble, and I mean a lot of it, um, there's an organization that deals with uh, people that can't get the protection order for some reason or another. Um, it's called the National Center on protection orders and they may be able to help you they have an attorney there and that attorney can try to help you get a protection order it's a national thing so anytime the one thing we like people to do is go far away from the county that they were in so three four hundred miles away you might get the order because the people where you are now they already know everything they know what's going on but your attorney would have to suggest that or uh, uh, say that they could do it in a different county. The other thing is, that you, since you had these situations happening over and over and there's a layer of things that have been going on and you have the documentation, when they say documentation, of course, you telling the story of everything that happened is one thing and having that written down. But having concrete evidence, like a video of something that happened, um, if you tore up your car, you have that. But these kind of things sound like they go to other people, not to the person that was the main aggressor. Yeah, so so, so when I did a yeah. little... So when I did a little research, a lot of parties were making me think that since he was doing it through third parties, he can't be held accountable. But he is still absolutely accountable no matter who he's sending, whether it's the police department, family members, if he's I mean, using others to lash take out. Your car he's... in to get detailed and then they tear it up. Hey, you got a case against them. But the police department covered it for it, and they um, would not let me do anything. They wouldn't review the body cam footage. I mean, well, the camera footage because they enlist people to do it. It's corrupt government Did officials. Did you ever have an attorney try to assist I've tried you? to get attorneys, but they interrupt any legal assistance that I get from legal aides and trying to hire one. This is, this is the biggest conspiracy to violate rights scheme I have ever seen before COVID. I told a lot of parties that I thought that something was because the school had a mysterious shutdown. And we picked up our kids Friday and nothing was wrong. I had a, I was starting a new job on Monday and the school had shut down for a whole week. They said that it was a flu epidemic. It wasn't a flu epidemic that Friday. So the school had teachers that fell my daughter out of malice and blatantly lied in the scheme. Then when they got caught in their criminal activity, I wrote letters to uh, Waco FBI, and they got caught in their crimes. Then the um, the school, as well as the CPS worker, disappeared like they never existed because they incriminated themselves. But a school was so crooked, they lied and schemed to keep me away from my child and corruption. And the Waco FBI covered for it, and now they have disappeared from existence. So they wouldn't get their felony charge. I don't know about them disappearing because the FBI can find anybody. Well, the FBI is claiming that they did not. 
well, the FBI is claiming that they did not get my letter from jail when I was in there on false charges, but that is a blatantly lie because these parties disappeared. Now the court is saying that the uh, CPS worker wasn't involved, which is a blatantly lie, blatant lie, because I know the man. Okay, so what would you like to happen now? Because all the things that you're saying, it's nothing that, you know, this is not a direct service, this hotline. But I can try to give you resources that could help in certain things. What would you like to happen now? Uh, like advocacy. There's no such thing uh, unless you're talking to a local domestic violence program. Do you want one in another area Hold on. where you are? Let's see. One moment. The hotline is immediate link to life-saving help for victims. It provides information and assistance to adult and youth. Ma'am, you don't have to. You don't have to read that to me. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing it. I'm asking you. Did you want to me to give you resources for somewhere else other than where you are? Since that's not working for you. If you want a legal advocate, or you want an advocate, uh, they don't call them. They only have legal advocates at the resources that we have. The shelters, they have legal advocates. If you want just an advocate, it's called a case manager. In some places, they have case managers. I can give you that. I can give you all kinds of resources, but I have to know kind of what's going to work for you. This is not working for you where you are now. I'm, I would like to relocate, but all places start arguments and scheme to keep me from services. They've gotten away with it years. So I'm stuck in it. I've tried to go in hiding, and the police department monitors my phone and controls it where I don't get my calls, nor no one would ever believe it come to my providers when I'm trying to interrupt. So now they were so crooked, they wouldn't. I couldn't even get a phone. They wanted me to go to straight talk. So when they break into the system or uh, commit crimes, there's no one I can go to to complain about their crimes. So I went to Metro PCS when I got out of jail on false charges, and they would not activate a phone for me. And I know that they could arrest me and do things to uh, harass and terrorize, so I needed the phone immediately. So I was forced to get straight talk. There's a resource called Cyber Civil Rights. It's a safety center for technology. So if anybody is tracing you, you should be able to, they should be able to help you with the tracer. Okay, so we you went to National Center on Protection Order. I didn't get that number. And no, then you interrupted me. I interrupted you? I'm sorry, ma'am. That's a pattern. I do that a lot and don't get numbers. I okay, apologize. So the National Center on Protective Orders. Okay. The number is 800-903-0111, extension 2. That's 903-0111, extension 2. Okay. The Safety Center for Technology, their number is 844-878-2274. Now, did you want to try to get uh, a talk to, like, a case manager somewhere else in the state? Yeah, it can be another state, but... Have you been, let me ask you, not another state, in the state, somewhere else in Texas. Have you? I, I, I um, can't have a choice of leaving Texas if I want it. You can leave Texas, you can go anywhere you want to go. Okay. There's just no funds to go unless Catholic Charities or 211 pay for you to get there. Oh, Catholic Charities is the only one? The funds. Or 211? Catholic Charities or 211. They'll pay That's the only people. if you're going to okay. a shelter. They may. I can't tell you what they do where you are, but they may do that. That's a possibility. Or they may. What about freedom to families? Them. A lot of people no. don't want me to know about that. And there's a place called Fe- um, Freedom for Families. Yeah. Is that in Dallas or Fort Worth? They so they're supposed to give you transportation to flee. My calls they used to actually tell me things, but then it, when I went to the locations, they would deprive me of services. Now, everywhere I call, is the information is limited. It's like it's controlled. My phone has been hacked, and I've had spoof calls. And not a lot of people are educated on that process and how that works, and a lot of people don't even know that exists. But I've had to endure um, not getting my phone calls and controlled call, uh, phone calls. Okay. 
in conversation, knowing that people wouldn't believe it. But yeah, so Catholic char um, Catholic charities. What about that um, freedoms to family? You're not aware of that. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with that. Because okay. Everything is not connected with us. Okay. Only the ones that wanted to be connected, because if they are connected with us, they have to be doing certain things. They have been investigated, and that's the only reason that we give you out the number, because they they are under a certain regimen of things that they have to do. If they're not in our thing, it's because they're doing something very different. They oh. may not want to be, because we're gonna give them tons of calls. So a lot of them don't want to be in the program just because of that. It may not be that they have good, they may have excellent services. When you call 211, they may tell you where you can call again. Okay, the you were telling me something about um, maybe relocating, and then I said that I would like to go to another state, but you said Texas. I don't, I don't, which do you recommend? I would prefer to get out of Texas, relocating to another state. Well, if you have an idea, now look, this is what we do. If you want to go to a different state, and you're talking about going to different states for shelter or for other resources. I like to go into hiding, and if, if it's possible to find someone that legitimately has the interest in helping me, and not a controlled person that my abuser's running. But yeah, if it's possible for me to get to another state, and it, maybe that it, outside of this state, it's possible to have, for him not to run everyone in my environment. Yeah, if you have resources, Sometimes, then yes, let's do that. Well, that depends on where you want to go. This is what we do. If you decide, I'm going to go to whatever state, Illinois, and then you pick a city, you tell me where you want to go, and I'll, I'll give you resources for that. I can call them and find out if they have space, they may want to talk to you. That's the thing. That's how it works. Okay, Probably well. The closer the state is to you, the better, because then you won't have a long traveling thing to worry about um but when you call for a ticket to go out of state a lot of times they don't want to have some kind of documentation that you're working with your local program and now you're trying to relocate somewhere else as far as your phone goes you oh, okay. Hold on. Let me make sure I understand. I understand. So they're going to want documentation that I'm working with a local place before they'll let me go move somewhere else. They may. I said they may. Oh, okay. They may. Nothing I say is an absolute. And we only try to get people in shelter. Okay. Well, what are the recommended guarantee. locations, ma'am? I have an appointment um, pretty soon uh, with the case manager here. She barely helps. She wants me to do everything by myself. So I'm trying to get legitimate people that really have an interest in helping me and not ul ulterior motives. So what are the locations? So it doesn't matter to me, but I just want an organization that will help me go underground and escape. An organization that doesn't mind that I'm a from a... We're gonna, the only thing that we're going to put you in contact with is where you want to go. And there are organizations that are shelters. They're mostly shelters. Now, I can give you some other resources. So if you want to go to another state, you want to pick your housing shelter. Or I, mean, I just want an organization that can help me. Yeah. It doesn't matter, ma'am. I can't give you an organization. You have to tell me where you want to go. Okay. And then so I, I have to know what. Okay. I, I have to give you a I city. Can't pick it for you. I, they don't let us pick it for you because it's not our life. You're going to be the one living there. So they Well, how am I going to know about it if you won't tell me, you know, if you're not telling me about the location? How would I know? telling you that there's some in every state. There's resources in every state. The shelters are in every state in the United States. We can call them, but you have to tell me. Okay, let's say Illinois. Tampa, let's say Illinois. Wherever you want to go. Let's say Illinois, ma'am. Illinois, ma'am. What city? Let me look on my phone. Are you able to call me at a specific time? Because I have an appointment in a few minutes. You have to be on the line with us in order to do this. You can't. We can't call you back. We don't have your number, and we don't want it. Okay? They don't want us to have anybody's number. All okay, ma'am. I get. I get. I have a lot, a lot of psychological abuse that you would not believe everywhere. So I just try to minimize, you know, you know, uh, issues. Yeah, you. I have an appointment, ma'am, if I can communicate that with you. And I, I just ask the question, um, I will call back at another time and then try to get something done.
but I have an appointment in a minute that she won't help, but I do have to, I'm obligated to do these appointments. Ma'am, I understand it's very stressful what you're going through, and I really sympathize with that. But the reason people hang up on you, probably, is because you sound so aggressive, and they can't get a word in. And oh, I thought that the reason why they were doing it is because they were scammers. And then they want to contribute to psychological abuse. And then when I try to, you know, my abuser likes to domineer women and um, to demean them. That's what he likes. And he's able to abuse a lot of power to degrade people. That's what he gets off on. No one's giving him any accountability. I thought he was controlling the cause personally. But I do have to go, ma'am. Thank you. I thought that he was, I think he's probably an identity thief and all these people are covering for him. I've already had identity theft and that's why they want to take me to jail to protect him. And I thought that if you had 20 false arrests and you were getting violated by the way that I was, that you'd get some compassion. But when you're dealing with his staff, it's nowhere to be found. That's why I don't want to call his staff. But anyway, ma'am, I got to go. Thank you. I'll call back. I, I, I have to go, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, that's when they did this when I had my job. Then they want to help. When I, but it won't hang up. I'm trying to hang up. Now it's hanging up that I'm recording. What I was trying to say when I was working, they would deliberately try to keep me on the phone so I was late for work. And wait times may be longer. If at any time it becomes unsafe for you to wait, please hang up and call back at a safer time. Your estimated wait time is about five minutes. Time is about five minutes. They're playing psychological games. They've done this years. So that's why I record. Because it's hit five minutes and I've been on hold over five minutes. And it's, it's malfunctioning. It keeps saying five minutes. That's exactly why I recorded it. Calling the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Are you safe to talk? It's safe enough, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I was referred to you guys today, but I've called before and representatives have been really psychologically abusive. I'm going through a lot, so if you could not be abusive, that would be really appreciated. Um, I've been, uh, when I go to jail, I'm violated in jail and get threatened and staff cover for it. I'm terrorized. They put me in isolation and um, deprive me of my constitutional right to go to court. I'm terrorized daily, catching the bus at restaurants, multiple different environments schemes for psychological abuse. I'm kept away from my kids and corruption and family. And I've been removed multiple different locations trying to get protection orders. Okay. Yes. They have connections um, with the police, that's right. So were your past partner, your intimate partner? It was someone I had met online, but it was telling me what was going on at home and the police would cover for it. So he would tell me things that I was doing. So then I realized I thought maybe he was watching me on my device. But then um, I realized that there were voyeurism crimes. But the police covered for him. And would not do anything to take the cameras out. And I was forced to live in an environment where this man was telling me what I was doing at home on fake pages. Wow, that is so awful. I'm so sorry he would do that to you. Thank you. And I'm assuming you reported it to the police. Yes, they covered for all of it. They didn't do anything? No. Um, have you looked into getting a protective or restraining order? The uh, uh, communicated that they keep removing me, trying to get a protection order and corruption and giving me criminal trespasses to keep me from protect getting protection against them. Uh, no, he just terrorizes. He has no need to contact me. He's monitoring my devices illegally and um, breaks into cameras and has been allowed to monitor me years with cameras, hidden cameras and different things. Like um, I'm some kind of high, high profile criminal, but he's using it for stalking. He has no need to contact me. He allow, he allow I get gang stalked. People in my environment are listening to the conspiracy and stalking as well including family members. That happens a lot. It's called digital abuse. How do you know he's been stalking you? It's called what kind of abuse? What kind of abuse is it called? Digital. Digital. Oh, okay. I thought it was cyber stalking, but digital abuse. Okay. Um, because yeah, he... cyber stalking also falls under digital abuse as well. 
I think that he's, um, no, I think that there were cameras in the house and the police wouldn't do an investigation to remove them. They let them stay in there. So then I went to a domestic violence organization and, um, w uh, w was away and, um, I hid my phones and cut my phones and things off. And then, um, when I came back from the domestic violence organization, they started to behave weird. I realized that they were being controlled. The domestic violence organization I went to to flee. So then when I came back, the police lied on me and I went to jail after I left the domestic violence organization. So, so that pro ish problem doesn't repeat itself, all organizations are controlled in advance and they deny me all assistance. So I can never get into them, all of them. The police department is abusing their power and corruption and then enlisting civilians in the conspiracy to violate my rights, keeping me from all services. They have even done it get, trying to purchase food and water and corruption. Oh, wow, that is so awful. And how have you been protecting yourself? I'm uh, calling this hotline to get information on how to protect myself. Because uh, uh, I just had to take it. There was nothing I can do that no one wasn't conspiring with it. In all my environments, if they didn't start off conspiring with it, they were enticed. They monitor me illegally and enlist anyone they can into abuse and cover up. Because he wants it to sting that people that I have a rapport with were enlisted to play mind games and contribute to the abuse. He loves that. So he likes to get it personal. And police would used to come and interrupt conversations for the torment. And then after they kept doing it, I got a, um, people realized that I was being tormented by the police department. So they stayed around uh, away from me. And that's kind of what my family's doing as well. Since when the police incriminated themselves and I started recording, they commit crimes in the background, she hung up. All of it's controlled. All that time. She's gone. They love me to go over it over and over and over again for the torment. Oh. Here we go again. Six years. It's malfunctioning. That's how you know they're identity thieves. How do you do this? They hung up. These are the times that I called. They hung up at 127, and then I called again, and then I thought you guys should see this. So I'll call again. Experiencing higher than normal call volume, and wait times may be longer. If at any time it becomes unsafe, time is about five minutes. So when I spoke to my ma case manager and I was asking her, telling her about the domestic violence crisis, she disregarded me and asked me another question. And then I repeated myself again. And she said, if they're not equipped, go to say, hey, the same person that accused me of doing something that didn't happen. So he likes to play these mind games so I can be degraded and scolded that he gets off on that. So she was blaming me for something that didn't happen. But this has happened at a multitude of environments. I was thinking that people were mentally ill. No, they're staging conflicts for psychological abuse. You reached the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Are you in a safe place to talk? It's safe as it safe as it'll get, ma'am. Excuse me? It's as safe as it'll get, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm not catching you. Okay, yes, it's saying. safe, ma'am. It's safe. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, an organization, I don't remember the organization that told was me to call this number. Violence? Was it a domestic violence organization? I, I think they do help. I've been in the situation um, six plus years. Happen. You want to know what I'd like to happen? I'd like to get assistance to flee it. I think I talked to you earlier today. Yeah, I know. I think you said that uh, I told you that I had an appointment. And you said you weren't yeah. able to call back. So we can go ahead and make yeah. those calls. Because I, I, told, she, I told her about the abuse situation that I was in and how I was trying to get help. And she disregarded me and changed the topic. But this happens quite often. So I don't want my abuser controlling all my environments. You know, at church, the police came out the shadows. And they said if I recorded at church being denied services at church, that um, I would not be allowed to go to, the, go to that church anymore. So all these locations don't want me recording crimes 
conspiracy to violate rights is a felony charge. Okay, you said you were saying that you wanted to go to Illinois, but you, did you pick a city? Oh, Illinois? let me see. I was just, you know, saying something random. You since you recommended, let me look around and see if oh, where I can okay. go. So whatever. If they don't have space there for you, I'm gonna move on to the next um, shelter near them. Okay. And I'll keep calling until somebody takes the call. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay. I could not take you. They said that no one in Atlanta, in Georgia, would take you because you have to be in the state. A lot of states are like that. They want you to be in the state, and some will make arrangements, but I don't have a list of who does and who doesn't. I have to call them as you give them to me. Oh, but Atlanta, so a whole state. They won't take you, and the, the danger of that is, and we don't like it because they'll say, you you got a space. They'll try to hold a space, but most of them can only hold a space for eight hours. Eight hours, maybe a little bit more. And if you're running late and you don't call in or you don't just keep in contact with whomever you are in contact with, they will give your space away. And then... Yeah, they don't, people don't really care about women fleeing abuse anymore. Yeah, I, a lot of places are really just... Telling you, if you go to another state, a lot of states will say you're no longer in danger because she doesn't know where you are. You're in another state. Altogether. Okay, well, let's go ahead and try another location. Um, what about Oklahoma? The shelter in Tulsa is going to take over the call. At this time, I'm going to release myself from the call for your privacy. You have a good day. You take too. Care. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hello? Yes. How can I help you? Yes. Um, I'm in a domestic violence crisis that involves the government. And I'm okay. looking to relocate and get into hiding and get protected. I've been deprived of protection and any kind of law enforcement for six plus years. I have multiple different false arrests, violated in jail on false arrests, multiple threats, guns pulled on me, ran off, ran off road, and the police department covers for all of it. Identity theft. Tulsa? I'm sorry? Are you moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma? I'm, I'm, I'm willing to relocate and get help to flee the abuse. Let me go ahead and transfer you to our shelter, okay? Oh, I, I thought she already did that. Well, she did, but I have to get some information that way. And you got to get some information? Happy to get you there. Okay, are you full? I'm sorry? Are you full? Uh, bear with me one minute. I, I asked if you were full. They play mind games for years, ma'am, and they're full all six years, every place I've ever called. Um, you, no, ma'am. I need to transfer you to the She said department. that she was making sure that the locations weren't full. I'm not. I'm asking you if you're full. I, I do not have that information. Well, I'm that's what she said she was checking on. Area. I've been on hold, and she said all of Georgia would not um let me in, the whole state. Let's see how that this goes, ma'am. Me. It's like this when your abuser's controlling calls. You just got to have proof that it's being done. Okay, ma'am. How would he get scammers in his pocket? Yes, I, I'm not understanding why this lady let me go on a long, drawn-out school on how she could help and then transfer me to you. And then the representative said that she was going to get on the line with the shelter and make sure you, you had space. Do you have space? Okay, I'm not, I'm not certain who you may have spoken with before you got to me, but this is the shelter. You don't want me to know if you have space? Oh, I just been calling six years, and I've ne- they never had space. I used the alias and got in one one time, and then you know they put me out when the car sped up like it was going to hit me. My life isn't normal. I'm in a domestic violence crisis that the government's enlisted in, churches, organizations, and family members, and some friends. Okay, what's your first and last name? And you you put women through this because I think this is a new protocol. You go through the long, drawn-out spill. Then after you go through the long spill for six years, they have been full. 
So why would you, would, it just doesn't seem like it's common sense. It seems like before you put a woman fleeing a domestic violence crisis through all that torment, you would know, want to know if they have space. But no, for six years, they want me to repeat myself over and over and relive the horror. Then they're full. Then you try to go get therapy. The, the police department's interrupting that at churches and anywhere else you could probably get, possibly get it. I'm just telling you about my crisis, ma'am. I understand. Okay. And full transparency, I am going to ask you to repeat how, whatever you may have told the last person. I'm used to it, ma'am. It's happened six years. Each time. Used to be for when they very, when I used a different name, she heard my crisis. Then she got on the phone and her, found me a, a, a place to go. And then I went there. Now you have to, they, they, they con and say that they have to hear it from you. So I have to relive the trauma. But they really don't. They just want me to relive that event. For me, I got to say it over and over. But for other people, they don't have to endure that. But I'm not treated like other women trying to flee abuse. But okay, ma'am, whatever you require. Let's see how this goes. May I have your birthday? Yes, I have an abuser. He has, um, I get harassed like with cars. I get gang stalked. So when I'm crossing intersections, these come, cars will come out routinely and pop out at me. And then when I'm at locations, people are enlisted into mind games and psychological abuse. That can be looked, you can see it on camera footage. I'm cyber stalked and I'm stalked um, by the police department. And there's crimes to keep me away from children. My daughter's 14. She witnessed my foster arrest screaming in terror at age eight. And she's an emotionally abusive uh, household that has also been physically abusive. But the police department and CPS covers for it. within the last 48 hours by any chance? Yes, I get cyber stalked. And then these cars, they so a lot of times they have sped up when I'm crossing the street. They come purposely try to scare me at intersections. It's like harassment. So I get gang stalked so these cars are ready for me when I hit the pavement. And then they like clockwork, they keep coming. So sometimes, you know, I try, I try to spot them out and show, um, record the situation. So there's evidence that how I get gang stalked and terrorized. When I go to restaurants, they deliberately uh, ruin my food. I've been trapped on buses and trains, and they hit me one time. They closed the door on me so hard I started bleeding, and the police department and supervisor covered for it, and would not give me any first aid, a band aid, or nothing. I was bleeding all over the place, and they would not give me anything to catch the blood. Yes, his name is Jason Gardner of Vivid Images, Baton Rouge. And did he ever tell you that he lived together here in Tulsa? No, it was like a stalking situation. And or like an online thing. I'm sorry? And when was the last time you had contact with that person? Um, he works through other people. Um, I haven't had contact with him. I ended the online relationship. Um, that was February, uh, February of 2018. And I went to a domestic violence organization in April to get, you know, get, make a plan because he was monitoring me in my home and the police wouldn't do anything regarding it. They let him do it. So I went to a domestic violence organization to make plans. And he had false arrests and teachers lying on me, all kinds of chaos all over the place. Ready for me when I got back. In no, he lives in Louisiana. And did you make a police report against him? I made like hundreds. The police department covers for everything. He hacks my phone illegally, spoofs calls, has people call. He had people call, threaten me, harass me, torment me. And he's used other people, even my job, to do it. He, he likes fear. He's sadistic. So he, he that's why he has the cars and people do things and threaten me. He likes to degrade women as well. May I ask where you have been staying to keep yourself safe? 
homeless shelter. I haven't been able to get into a spot that i um, hiding to protect myself from them. I tried to get in witness protection, but that I keep on getting done. The police department interrupts me. They're his minions. So they interrupt me trying to get protection from him. Hold on one second. Okay. Four, one, five, oh, five. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the capacity to take you in. We are on what is considered high legality. I would, however, like to offer you some numbers to alternative shelters that may have the capacity to hold you. Um, I don't understand what happened because it said on the domestic violence, national domestic violence hotline, and she told me that she found out. Are you sure this is a shelter in Oklahoma? Because I think you're a con artist, ma'am. I think you're a scammer. I think that's why for six years, all places have been full in starting arguments and contributing to psychological abuse. I think these people involved in the government are identity thieves, ma'am. I don't think you're the shelter. I think you're an identity thief that my abuser has hired to control my phone. No, no one would believe my story. You don't call six years going over this mess over and over again for every place for six years to be full in Alaska. No, ma'am, I don't think that you are. What's the name of the shelter, ma'am? Because that's not how the procedure, I just don't understand. I think it's something fishy to call in around six years for all places to be full, even in Alaska. They, I've heard this six years, ma'am. That's why I don't believe you. I think that you're probably an identity thief. I think that's why you call six years, because six years, Alaska, they're full and hanging up in my face. I'm just trying to look for evidence, ma'am, so people can finally get their charges. I don't know who all you guys have robbed out of funds, because you definitely robbed me out of thousands. I, I, you Six years of this mess. I'm just trying to build up enough evidence so people can get their charges. Maybe they care about their family being robbed. She hung up.